This species is best known from a partial female skeleton that got a lot of buzz in 2009. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 human ancestors. Lucy became an almost instant celebrity in anthropological circles. It was instantly controversial, and it's still controversial to some people today. It's a bit of a mess. He said erectus. <laughs> you're, you're kidding, right? No, you really said it. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at our relatives in the evolutionary tree whom we may have descended from or interbred with. So an isolated branch like Homo floresiensis, for example, the so-called hobbit people of Indonesia is out no matter how great their nickname. We'll be ranking roughly in chronological order, although we will also take genetic admixture into account. Which of these would you most like to travel back in time to meet? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Nakalipithecus nakayamai. About 14 million years ago, the ancestral lines of the great apes began to split off from our own. The great grandfolks of orangutans, then gorillas and later chimpanzees, all struck out on different evolutionary paths. Nakalipithecus nakayamai is the last known common ancestor of gorillas, chimps, and humans. Living 10 million years ago in East Africa, it was a large ape somewhere around the size of a female gorilla. The discovery in 2005 of its jawbone and teeth in Kenya supports the view that our evolution took place wholly in Africa, rather than moving to Europe and back as had been speculated before. We're not descended from them, yes. we're cousins of them. So we and they go yes. back to a common ancestor. There are the chimpanzees, yes. there's us, we go back to a common ancestor. Number 9. Sahelanthropus chidensis. This is my story and the beginning of yours. Experts aren't sure when exactly chimpanzee and human ancestors diverged. But the discoverers of Sahelanthropus chidensis, a species that lived 7 million years ago in Central Africa, believe it to be a transitional species from around the time the chimpanzee lineage branched off. And yeah, the name is kind of a mouthful, um, but this is a really important species. It was first discovered in 2001 um, in the Central African country of Chad. And so far in the last 19 years, we haven't discovered anything older that is likely to be classified as a hominid. So far, the fossil evidence consists mainly of one small distorted cranium, and the details are debated. That it may be close to the reality, but we don't know, because we don't know about his hair, his eyes, or his nose. Was it arboreal or bipedal? Did it come before or after the split? Or was it an offshoot of another line entirely? Experts disagree but the skull does seem to combine both ape-like and human-like characteristics. Number 8. Artipithecus ramidus Some 4 million years ago, our curious great-grandfolks climbed down from the trees to poke about on the ground. This species is best known from a partial female skeleton that got a lot of buzz in 2009. She was nicknamed Artie. Artie was small, just under 1.2 meters tall, and based on the fossils of animals found around her, she lived in a wooded environment and her skeleton told a surprising story. Their forests were dwindling as the climate became cooler and drier. A few scientists think that supernovae also played a role, with radiation triggering lightning storms and forest fires that created more grasslands. Fossil remains of Artipithecus ramidus, unearthed in Ethiopia and dated to 4.4 million years ago, seem to show the transition towards bipedalism in action. Artipithecus takes us pretty far back toward that branch and informs us that the node point, the junction, the last common ancestor, was neither human nor a chimpanzee. It was something entirely different. The species had a big toe ideal for grasping branches, but also a pelvic structure that may have allowed them to walk on two legs. We go down to the pelvis, we see the same thing. Adaptations to two-legged walking, but also some primitive characteristics that seem to indicate climbing. And we can see that best in the nearly intact foot. According to some researchers, its smaller canine teeth might suggest a reduction in aggression foundational for cooperative social behavior. Number 7. Australopithecus afarensis Meet Lucy, one of the most famous fossils in history. When you look at it as a whole, there's an amalgam of more primitive and more derived features that had not been seen before. In 1974, researchers found her 3 million year old partial skeleton in the Awash Valley in Ethiopia. To celebrate, they played the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, inspiring her name. Lucy became an almost instant celebrity in anthropological circles. She didn't look like anything we had ever found before. She was something very different. 
And because of that, she opened up for us an entire new chapter on human origins. Lucy had long arms, a small brain, and a protruding jaw, but her pelvis was remarkably human, showing she could walk upright. Lucy's legs formed an angle. Her knees were close together, just like our own knees. This positions the feet directly underneath the body, making walking easier and more efficient. It's thought that others of her species left remarkably well-preserved footprints at Lytoli, Tanzania, as they tracked through the muddy ash left by volcanic eruptions. Number 6. Australopithecus africanus Lucy's younger cousin, Australopithecus africanus, holds a special place in archaeological history. In 1924, quarrymen stumbled over its fossilized remains in South Africa, catching the attention of Australian anthropologist Raymond Dart. Dart's claim that the fossil was the so-called missing link between man and apes set him against many of his peers, who thought modern man must have jolly well come from Europe and not Africa. It took decades, but Dart was eventually vindicated. Modern analysis reveals that the fossil, which became known as the Tong Child, may have been killed by a hungry eagle. Ancient times were rough. Today, millions of years after the small hominid child met his end, its amazing fossil continues to play a crucial role in our understanding of human evolution. Number 5. Homo habilis As the climate continued to cool and dry out two and a half million years ago, our ancestors faced new challenges. Grasslands replaced forests, and old food sources became scarce. Around this time, Homo habilis, the earliest known archaic human, began strolling around the savanna. Meaning handyman, its name refers to the use of stone tools, possibly to butcher animals. The increased meat consumption may have driven other changes in our evolution. It'll take more research to figure out what exactly is going on here, but that's part of what makes paleoanthropology so interesting. New discoveries are made all the time. Homo habilis had a flatter face and larger brain than Australopithecus, although some scholars argue the line between them gets pretty blurry. It was argued very strongly to be a contender for, for early Homo, and it was instantly controversial, and it's still controversial to some people today. It's a bit of a mess. But its emergence marked a huge step towards the evolution of modern humans. Number four, Homo erectus. He said erectus. <laughs> you're, you're kidding, right? No, you really said it. <laughs> Soon, a taller and more slender species was also strolling the savanna, Homo erectus, also known as upright man. Homo erectus is the earliest hominin believed to have mastered fire and to have cooked food, allowing a dramatic improvement in our ancestors' diets. It's commonly thought that Homo erectus originated in Africa two million years ago, then spread out through Eurasia. Although Homo erectus has also been found in Africa and Europe, anthropologists have fiercely debated for almost a century where these early Asians came from and whether they belong on our modern family tree. However, an origin in Asia has also been argued. Another point of contention is its relationship to Homo ergaster, which some consider a separate species and others African Homo erectus. Regardless, it's pretty humbling to think that Homo erectus survived for over 2 million years, making our own 300,000-year history seem like the blink of an eye. Hi, fire. Number 3. Homo heidelbergensis we owe a lot to Homo heidelbergensis. If Homo erectus is our slightly eccentric grandfather, Homo heidelbergensis is closer to a familiar father figure. They lived roughly 500,000 years ago um, in the middle of the Pleistocene. They are found all over um, in on three different continents. There's examples of them in Europe, and that's primarily where they're found. While it's thought that Homo heidelbergensis descended from African Homo erectus, their time on Earth overlapped for several millennia. Arriving on the scene six to 700,000 years ago, Homo heidelbergensis looked a lot like us, with a large brain and similar stature. They also built permanent shelters. Some fanned out throughout Europe and eventually evolved into Neanderthals. A few ready travelers branched out into Asia, evolving into Denisovans. Meanwhile, back in Africa, there emerged a new species, possibly from Homo heidelbergensis, Homo sapiens. Have you ever seen a homo sapien? You don't know, want to know. Yeah, I saw one once at the zoo. Describe it. Furry. Yep. Big. Mm hmm Gorilla looking. He was picking his whatchadilly. He was? Yeah. <laughs> Number two, Denisovans. We don't know much about the Denisovans, Neanderthal's eastern cousins. 
the only fossils we have are a few bones and teeth. This was the first time that we identified a new form of extinct human just from a genome sequence. And hardly any information at all from bones or stone tools. But thanks to DNA analysis, we do know this. Our ancestors had a pretty crazy sex life. And we don't mean with each other. We mean with other species of humans. Denisovans branched off from Neanderthals, but also did the dirty with them, with us, and at least one other species, possibly Homo erectus. Their DNA tells scientists that the Denisovans may have roamed all across Asia. And based on genetic differences between the different fossils from Denisova Cave, scientists think that two of the individuals lived roughly 65,000 years apart. In fact, today's Melanesians and Australian Aboriginals still carry traces of their DNA, and Tibetans might owe a gene that allows them to live at high altitudes to the same source. This indicates that Denisovans and their descendants may have had a greater geographic area than previously thought. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Neanderthals Neanderthal A species of human, in many ways so similar to us, and yet also very different. Life for our ancestors could certainly be nasty, brutish, and short. How did they cope in a world where nature was unpredictable and death sudden? Archaeological evidence suggests that Neanderthals might have been the first humans to bury their dead, and may have even held funerals. It's hard to say if this means Neanderthals had spiritual beliefs, but we do know they were much more sophisticated than once thought, using fire, advanced stone tools, and possibly language. Neanderthals may have even painted cave art in Spain. Stockier, stronger, and bigger-brained than us, they nonetheless vanished about 40,000 years ago, soon after modern humans reached Europe. Some scientists believe the Neanderthals were killed or outcompeted by modern humans, or Homo sapiens, who arrived in Europe at around the same time as the Neanderthals' extinction. But thanks to interbreeding, Neanderthal DNA lives on, carried in the genomes of Homo sapiens today. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.